All right, so got you know a couple of little things happening here in my Tundra. As you can see, I'm just about hit to hit 90,000 miles, and my four wheel drive broke. Uh, I've been using it, you know, the last few days, no problem. It goes in and out just fine. Um, I just took it in the shop and did an oil change and tire rotation, and I didn't think the lights were on when I pulled it out of the shop, but when I go to start it to leave, I'm greeted with all of these lights. You got, you know, four high, four low, flashing, VSC off, traction control light, and ABS light all on. Um, it does not do anything when I turn the switch from two, two wheel to high, to four high. Um, I didn't even feel like taking it back in the shop to scan it, so I'm going to get home and see if I can use my Carly to scan it and see what's going on with it. I sure as hell don't think I did anything rotating the tires. I mean, I had to knock a couple of the rear tires loose with a hammer like I normally do. But, um, yeah, okay, so there's 90,000 miles. I got that on video along with the, uh, well, that's not a trifecta. It's, what, about six, five or six warning lights going right there? So, I don't know. This thing has never had an issue with the four-wheel drive. It's always worked perfectly. So, yep. That's what I'm dealing with right now. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Sweat Equity. Um, today, I am going to look at the Tundra. Um, four-wheel drive was not working um, anymore. I had about four or five warning lights on the dash. When, uh, ironically, right when the truck hit 90,000 miles is when this, this happened. Um, I am actually currently running a health check on it using TechStream Lite. Um, I did actually cheat the other day and just use my Carly uh, with my phone to see what the code was. The only code that I came up with was um, C1332, which is uh, an open circuit in the right rear speed sensor. Basically, uh, I already went ahead and bought the uh, the rear harness. It goes to both sides. My experience with Toyota is that the sensors rarely ever go bad. It's much more common for the wire itself to be where the problem is than the sensor itself. Right now, I, I started the truck up today and all I have is an ABS light. Um, all right, so we got the health check up here. What we have is uh, C1241, C1332, um, and we have an airbag code, which is in history, which is interesting. We'll have to look and see what that is. Click on ABS, lower high power supply voltage, and the open circuit in the right rear speed sensor. So, so I'm gonna just ignore that one for right now. A lot of times these codes can set, codes like this are kind of generic and they'll set along with other codes. See what the freeze frame shows for the 1332. Showing the, all the wheels were just sitting at zero, so it wasn't moving. Definitely more of a reason that there's just an open, I mean, it says it's an open circuit, so obviously it makes sense that it wouldn't need to be moving to set it. Let's take a look at the data list now. Right up top there is the wheel speed. I'm gonna just roll forward here. So right now, they're all working. So we have, yeah. So right now, everything's fine. So even more indication um, that we just have, you know, a wire problem and not necessarily a sensor problem. Um, the sensors on Toyotas in general, they don't, like I just said, they don't really go bad. Um, basically, if you have a bad wheel bearing on uh, a Tundra or, you know, any truck with a rear wheel drive base, um, and you get lots of debris and dirt in there, like that's going to cause the sensor to not read, um, possibly cause physical damage to it. Um, Sometimes the sensors are, you know, just corroded up really bad, things, you know, things like that. But the sensors themselves rarely go bad. Normally it's always the wire 
that's that's cut somehow or, or frayed or something. Uh, so just you know, before anybody starts just throwing a, a sensor at an ABS speed sensor code, um, start with the the harness, the wire, because that's probably going to be the problem. If you don't want to do any kind of diagnostic at all and just kind of shotgun it, if you will. So um, that's kind of what I'm going to do with this. And just to kind of show you right now, this is what we have just sitting here. Um, everything is fine except for the ABS light, which if I just drove this right down the street, that light would go off right now as long as it didn't have the problem come back. Um, a lot of times you just have to drive something for the ABS light to go off. But right now I should be able to put it in four high. Yep, there it is in four wheel. Turn it off. Everything's off. So there's no issue with the four wheel drive system at all. It just wouldn't engage with that active uh, 1332 code. We're gonna go ahead and get up under the truck and take a look and see what we got um, as far as the sensor is concerned. All right, so this is the new part right here. This is the state control sensor wire harness. That's the part number right there. And this will cover both sides of the rear. So both left and right speed sensors be covered by this one harness all right so basically the harness starts right there on the this is the right rear wheel and it has the connector there it has a let's see if I can get that right there there is a clip pulling it right there it comes across this has various places where it's clipped in All the way across and right here there's a 12 millimeter bolt and then it goes up to the charcoal canister and then that right there is the connector up top and it goes over to the left rear wheel and can get right, right there on that side so we're going to just go ahead and swap it off so they have these protective covers over the the harness that you can just pop off to make it a little bit easier to get to and then you just have a normal little push tab sometimes it's easier to when these are on if you just squeeze it may not work so just kind of push it on a little more just push in and then squeeze and it should come right off so if you squeeze these actually i'm sorry this way and you can just push them right through and you don't damage it at all. That's really the correct way to do it. Just kind of squeeze the little tabs and then just push right through. So we're going to do that all the way across and then I'll show you the top part. You got your 12 millimeter right here. Which was crazy rusted in place. And the connector up top has the locking tab on top. Just push, you're going to pull the side that's still attached to the truck off. And the new harness actually comes with this bracket right here, so you're going to take that nut off. I'm going to go ahead and spray that down with some penetrating oil first, just to, especially after taking that last one off. Let that soak a little bit, and then you're going to pull this whole piece off. the new one in the opposite order of taking the old one off. And when you're putting the new connectors on, you don't have to worry about taking that plastic gray plastic piece off. You have to get them lined up properly. And that's it. Got the two brackets screwed in place. You're just gonna run this the same way as you ran that the old one ran. I'm going to start from the middle. I'm going to start right here and I'm going to work my way across. Just clipping those things in place. I think this is the only one that faces forward. The rest of them I think all 
paste uh, towards the back. Should run under parking brake cable there. Pads there that you have to get lined up properly. There you go. All right, so all the way across in all of the original places that it was. This one right here, I just put in this side because it seemed like it was going to be a little too close to that. Um, you have the two a bolt and a screw. I'm sorry, a, a bolt and a nut up on top there, all the way across. So it is installed and we're good to go.